to Lesson 21 of Doodling with Purpose, your step-by-step -step guide to learning hieroglyphics. Before jumping in today, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about going to Egypt, because I actually did go to Egypt. Well, I mean, obviously this is not me, because I'm both not a camel or a beautiful blonde, but I did, after college, go with my two best friends to Egypt, and that was a big reason I was so turned on to learning more about hieroglyphics and the culture and the ancient world, and honestly, I can't recommend it enough. The reason I'm mentioning it here is because when most people kind of think of Egypt and they think of traveling there, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is going to be the pyramids and, you know, seeing the tombs. And I wish I had learned hieroglyphics before I went there. I would have had an even more amazing time. But another big thing about Egypt is it has a whole other side to it besides the pyramids and all of the ancient stuff. For example, it has the town of Dahab, which is one of my favorite places in the world. I had no idea I was going to enjoy Dahab this much. It's, it's like basically a Caribbean vacation in Egypt. It's where a lot of Europeans actually go, since, you know, the Caribbean is on the other side of the world. Caribbean? Caribbean. Excuse me. All right. So with my little plug away for traveling to Egypt, let's jump back into hieroglyphics and do our time for review, looking at the three glyphs we learned last week. And then we'll get to three new glyphs, as we always do. All right, so last week we started with fish, starting with the tail, back up, the top fin, cut it off face for the eye, and two fins. Made it a little thin there. I should have made it thicker. All right, next we're going to have the oars. So we start with your sort of Mexican hat, hands down, and then straight down for the oar, and a triangle at the bottom to make the actual oar, and that's the hands rowing. And last, we had the headless cow, starting with the neck, the back, a bite out of it, a little sky bird for the bottom, the front leg, now you add two more legs, back, front, and a little tail. And that's your headless calf. All right, speaking of headless calf, our next one is going to actually be similar. It's a butcher's block. And no, it's not this butcher's block, like a, a modern thing, but in ancient Egypt, they also obviously had butcher blocks and were cutting meat and skinning animals and whether it was done for sacrifice or for eating it was all part of their culture and you can see you know you, I mean, there's whole reliefs of them butchering animals on different tombs and different monuments because being a butcher in ancient Egypt was actually a sort of a, a high level job it was really looked up to as far as like society went you know right under sort of priests you also had, you had the butchers because the butchers were were often butchering for sacrificial reasons. All right, so the butcher's block in the uh, hieroglyphic language is going to make the sound her, her, just like the, uh, well, actually, there hasn't been a her yet, has there? All right, so her like her. All right, yep, you're right, this is our first her. All right, so we're going to do a trapezoid there, and then we're going to make the little X-Men symbol in the middle with the top of the X being shorter. So start at the top two diagonal lines down, line at the bottom for the base, and then we're going to make an X in the middle with the top of the X being shorter than the bottom. One more time. Top, diagonal down, diagonal down, flat across, top of the X in the, to the middle, and then bottom of the X, with the top again being a little shorter. And that's your butcher's block. All right, and if we hadn't had enough fun with food, more fish. This fish specifically is the Nile carp, which is probably one of the most common fish as part of the Nile. And uh, this is how it looks. This is the, the hieroglyphic version of it. And you'll see it showing up quite a lot, not just as a letter, but it does pop up as a determinative sometimes when you're saying the word fish, like we talked about last week. Sometimes these, uh, this, these, all of the letter symbols can also be determinative sometime, more often with the animals. And you'll see also a simplified version, sometimes where it just is done in outline without all of the detail or the extra fins. This is going to be the pronunciation in, I-N. I tend to think of it like the fish is in the Nile. That's how I tend to remember it. Pretty easy to draw. We start just like the R, with like a mouth. Then we do the back fin. We cut it in half with a half circle at the I, top fin, and bottom fins. So one more time we're going to do top and bottom 
we're going to do the tail, which is a triangle. We're going to do the top fin, cut it across for the face, the eye, and the bottom fins. Last time, we're going to do a half loop, another half loop, so that's basically the R, but turning the R into a fish by giving it a tail, a top fin, a face, an eye, and two bottom fins. All right, and now we're actually going to, speaking of the mouth, now we're going to go on to the eye exam for ancient Egypt. Uh, you obviously have probably seen the Egyptian hieroglyph for eye quite a lot. It's also used as the eye of Horus, which is kind of a uh, pop culture hieroglyph that, that you see utilized all the time in movies and cartoons and t-shirts and stuff. But when we're actually having an Egyptian eye exam, it's not going to be specifically this eye, which has that sort of curly cue at the, on the left and then that straight down line as well as the eyebrow. We're actually doing the letter. So not the eye of Horus, but just the eye, which looks more like this, uh, which is basically kind of almost similar to the, to the mouth or to the fish. And this is going to be er, I R. I also I tend to think of like iris, like the eye has an iris. So that's how I remember the I R sound for the eye. And this is actually an important letter because it's also the verb to do or to make. Uh, so it, it comes up a lot when learning the language. So that's why, yeah, you're going to want to draw in the eye a lot in sentences. All right, so it starts with a line and then the two curves. See how I have that line here? Then a half loop and a top half loop. And that's your eye. So straight line that ends in a curve, line, and another line, half loop. So you'll see how there's that, it starts with that straight line because it's got that little bit of an extra part there. All right, and that's your I, your er sound. So whether you're learning hieroglyphs because you want to learn about ancient monuments or you're actually thinking of visiting Egypt one day, I definitely highly recommend it. Whether you're going by yourself, you're going with family, friends, kids, relatives, coworkers, your mortal enemy, who knows? But there's a lot in Egypt beyond just the monuments. It's, it's like getting a tropical vacation with monuments, which is pretty cool. And uh, we'll keep going with the series, doodling with purpose, so that when you are ready for your trip to Egypt, you can actually read what's on those monuments and make the trip even better. Thanks for watching. See you next week.